Okay, so thank you. So today we will be reviewing um, the application process for performance year three for CTIs, as well as going over some of the reporting updates that have taken place in the care transformation profiler. Um, feel free to put questions in the chat, raise your hand. Um, it's fairly informal, so we can, of course, take questions as we go. Okay, so just um, for start this off for informational sake, um, if there are questions, you of course can reach out to me directly, but we do have two um, joint e um, email or inboxes, the HSCRC care transformation at maryland.gov or care redesign at crisphealth.org, um, and we can be sure to direct your CTI questions the correct to the correct department. Okay, so let's talk about performance year three. Um, before I go into the demo, I did want to take a second and review some of the dates and information that was shared at the CTI steering committee. Um, so performance year three runs from this July, so July 2023 through June of 2024. Um, there were no new, no new CTI thematic areas, so therefore the existing CTI um, thematic areas are the only ones that are available. So that's your primary care, your palliative care, care coordination, emergency care, and um, community-based care. So the application period um, actually did open last Monday, April 4th, and the period the application period ends on Wednesday, May um, 31st. So during this time frame is when hospitals can add, deactivate, or modify existing CTIs. I do want to note that um, if hospitals do not want to, or sorry, if hospitals want to continue with an existing CTI without making additional changes, they are not required to resubmit. Um, and in fact, by default, um, CTIs with no changes and that we do not receive a deactivation notification, they will roll over to PY3 in their existing definition. Um, so speaking of deactivation, if a hospital does want to deactivate an existing CTI for PY3, um, please send us a note at that hscrc.caretransformation at maryland.gov email. Um, so what this tells us is while, of course, the CTI will continue for the current year, um, since we can't just enroll in the middle of performance year, um, we will um, remove it from next year. And this is quite common if you're making a small modification to one of your CTIs, for example, changing an NPI list or a zip code list. Um, essentially, you're creating a new, a new CTI with very similar definitions, and you will likely want to replace um, an old CTI and thus deactivate that old one. Um, so again, please let us know, um, and we will be sure to make sure the correct ones are moving forward for PY3. As with last year, all the CTI applications are gonna be made through the Care Trans Transformation Profiler. Again, I'll review that shortly. Um, and within the profiler, same with last year, you will be able to um, calculate the number of beneficiaries that are in the baseline using the filters and criteria that were selected. Um, and you'll also be able to compare that to the expected MSR. Again, all of the, these things prior to submitting to hopefully help you guys um, define your uh, CTIs as you see fit. Now, um, if there are requests for additional ad hoc analysis that can be submitted again to that HSCRC email, um, when we say ad hoc analysis, I mean, we don't expect a huge number um, as much of the requests in prior years had to do with what is the total population in my baseline. Um, however, if there is a need for additional information such as cost and demographic data, um, we can provide that. These requests couldn't take up to two weeks um, but quite frankly, it could be even longer if we're getting um, a large amount of requests simultaneously. So we encourage you all to please let us know um, if you're requesting an ad hoc analysis, um, please let us know as soon as possible um, so that we can get that turned around before the end of May and the end of the deadline period. Um, so that I think is the overview of just sort of the logistics, let's say, of the CTI um, application process for next year. Um, I'll pause if there are any questions, um, please just raise your hand, take yourself off mute, get them in the chat. Um, oh, and there was a question, um, is this for hospitals or for practices? Um, so when I review the demo, the way CTIs are submitted, it is done at a hospital level. So you can participate as a singular hospital or um, participate as, um, in a CTI with multiple hospitals if you select. Um, but again, that is done at the hospital level. Okay, um, 
So let me move on to the demonstration. Um, before I switch my screen, again, just want to remind people that you can log in um, using that ctp.crisphealth.org. Um, that will get you directly to the sites or reports at crisphealth.org. Um, about this uh, participation manager, manager or submitter role. So each hospital has designated up to three individual users that have been provisioned as the CTI submitter. Though only those users are um, have been given access to that additional navigation button to allow them to submit CTIs. Um, if you don't know who they are, if you've had turnover, please feel free to reach out to us. We can easily add and modify um, those users as, um, as we see fit. Um, we selected three because we don't want to get in a situation where there's sort of too many cooks in the kitchen um, and multiple people submitting CTIs, there being duplication issues or things like that. Um, but of course, um, again, we can edit those users as needed. Um, please reach out to us and we'll make sure we get the right users assigned um, to each hospital. Um, and then the other thing that I'll be reviewing, but again, I just want to put it here, is that the reporting enhancements associated with the CTP really can be categorized in four different areas. Um, we've created panel-based CTI reports. Um, there has been an update to part of the state summary tab, and there are two new tabs, one for a target price breakdown and one for a final reconciliation. Okay, so I'm going to pause here and um, bring up the site. Yeah. Hopefully you guys can see my screen. Um, so I am in a stage site, but this is very similar to what your um, what the live site currently looks like. Um, so obviously you will go to the care transformation profiler. And again, we're going to spend our time in this participation management, and then we're going to review these final four um, tabs as well. So when you open the participation management tab, um, really this is the, the place where you're going to do all of your submissions for new CTIs. Um, you'll see here that there is a drop down for your performance period. So since we did this process last year, um, PY2 is available, but you'll want to be sure that you're in PY3 when you're doing submissions for this year. Um, but it does allow you to compare CTI submissions from each year. Um, however, since PY2 was our first year doing it, you'll notice that uh, there is not a drop down for PY1, um, but future real years will be continued um, to be added here as we you know, add more and more CTIs. Okay, so looking at this left hand panel over here program resources, this is just some quick links for you all. Um, so this will get you straight to the HSCRC CTI uh, program page, which has some additional information. Um, when the user guide is published, it'll be linked here. And then finally, there's a link um, to directly email the CRISP support for any additional questions. Um, moving on to this middle period, this is, allows you to view CTIs after the enrollment period. Um, again, we are currently in the enrollment period, so we won't be able to see anything, and we'll spend most of our time today in this enrollment actions period over here. Now, they're the same three actions from last year. We have this create new CTI submissions, this edit CTI submissions, and view my CTI submissions, but you will see a new button, create CTI from existing definition, which was added for this year, um, and so we'll start to review that later. Um, so to begin, we're going to start with the create CTI and review this workflow. So when you click this button, um, to start, basically, you will see you want to select a thematic area. Um, and this is really important that this is picked from the start, as there are fundamental differences to how the definitions are constructed. Um, so on this right hand side here, you can see that there are some um, details about the thematic area that you have selected. In this case, this is care transformation. Um, but if I change and toggle between them, you can see that some of this information changes as well. Um, and what also changes is the options for customization within that thematic area. Um, so you can see that for care transformations down here, here are some of the areas that you can customize. Um, and again, the workflow will follow for that. Um, each, for each of these items, you can select no custom, 
which basically triggers a downstream workflow for you as a user to um, specify that customization. Or you can select yes default, um, which essentially allows you to skip over that step um, and any default parameter would be used there and no additional input is needed. Um, so back over here on the left, um, each thematic area has a different trigger criteria, some that you can modify, some you cannot. Um, for this one, for care transitions, um, you get the decision to either include or exclude the index episode of your CTI. Again, you can drop down and, and make that decision here. Um, and then this other, um, this other box down here, you can see it says trigger event. Again, this is a default inpatient discharge for your information, but does not, the system does not allow you to make any changes here. So before you move on to start, um, you'll need to manually type a name for this CTI. Um, we always recommend a concise name since, um, you know, we don't want it to be a paragraph long, um, but one that does allow you to easily identify and differentiate um, this CTI from others. Um, so I'm just going to do um, a really bad one right now, but test CTI EY3 demo. Um, and once you enter your name and you select save, you'll notice that a CTI ID is automatically generated. This is the unique identifier for you, your CTI. Um, we always like to say it's very, very helpful for us if you include this number in any correspondence or questions you have with Chris for the HSCRC, because again, that's the unique identifier. It sort of helps us drill down to the correct CTI that you are inquiring about and get you guys um, the answers that you need. Um, for purposes of this demo, I'm actually going to collect select no custom for all of these thematic area options, um, and that will allow us to walk through these steps um, and look at the workflows associated with them. So again, no custom down here, um, no custom down here, and I will select next, and it'll sort of take us to the next phase of um, the workflow. I do want to note for any of these, while we recommend using the next and back buttons, it is good that um, you also continue to save, but the system will prompt you, of course, if you do not save anything on that page. So of course, I want to select yes, and it'll move us on to um, the next page. Um, so to start, this is the basic CTI information. Um, I do want to note that on the left is a list or really the workflow um, for all of the different customizations. As mentioned, we recommend, especially for the first time that you use these next and back features to ensure we don't skip over anything. But if you're going back into edit, you can quickly go to a section by selecting something from your left hand menu. Um, so, okay. So for each of these pages, you will have instructions at the top. Um, we obviously recommend you review these and hopefully it answers commonly occurring questions. Um, however, there is a CTI user guide. This, again, this is where the technical aspect of the, um, for the CTI is that can review the different clicks within the CTP if you need more information. Um, but again, this is sort of hopefully the main directions will be listed at the top. So to start on this page, uh, the first thing that you'll be prompted to do is select your baseline period. So you will pick the start date from the system. Again, these are the ones that are available. Um, I'm just going to click any of them. I'll do um, July 1, 2018. And the system will automatically generate um, the end date of a 12-month period here. So for this instance, it's 6-30-2019. Um, the elements over here are, as you'll notice, it's the same with this, this um, baseline end, are grayed out. And this is for really informational purposes only, since these are system generated and for your reference, but we did want to make that a view viewable for you all. Um, also, these will change. Um, for example, once things have been submitted, you'll see that this grayed area status of unsubmitted will change to be submitted, and we also will show the approval date. Again, informational things you cannot go in and change. Um, sort of going back to that first question about where, what is the participation level here? It is at um, the hospital. So for this, for this participant drop down, you can see um, that there are all the hospitals listed. Most of our um, users and hospitals do participate at an individual hospital level. And if that is the case, you can go in and just, let's say, select your one hospital. And um, that, that indicates who's participating. But of course, we are aware that there are regional partnerships as well as system relationships that may require you to go in and select multiple ones. 
I'm just going to use MedStar as an example. If they wanted to include all of those, you can go in and select many of them, and the CTI would include participation from all of those. Now, we do ask that um, users who are um, or CTIs and users that have multiple hospitals, you please coordinate with the individuals across your system hospitals. Um, we only need one CTI for, um, or one submission for each CTI. So, um, you know, Franklin Square and Good Sam would not need to submit something um, individually. They can submit one jointly if they're choosing to participate together. Um, so again, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna click anyone from here. I will do Carol. Um, and then um, at the bottom here is this CTI description. And this is where we ask that you provide some information about the interventions um, or the care redesign efforts that you're taking as part of your CTI. Um, no specific length is required. Um, however, we do wanna note that the more information we have in the description field, um, it is very helpful for us to assess the overall program. For those that were able to um, join the uh, presentation by AAR a couple weeks ago, um, they utilized this descriptive field quite a lot when um, comparing similarities and differences. So um, again, the more information, the better. It just sort of helps us, um, I think, level set where some of the CTs are, eyes are and the intention behind them. So I'm just going to do test here. This, again, will be accepted. It needs any a number of characters. Again, no minimum is required, but we hope that you guys can um, of course, add a little bit more here. Um, so what I skipped over here, and I'll spend a second, is this hierarchy preference up here. And this is actually a new functionality that was added for PY3. Um, and it is an optional element. So the um, purpose of this is for users to indicate their, um, how they would like to order or rank their different CTIs. Um, if you live, leave this blank, we will use the default ranking. Again, this, this field is not required, but if you're submitting multiple CTIs, you can use this drop date to basically indicate the hierarchy and which CTI you'd like to be ranked first. Um, these numbers are all relative. So one will always be ranked first and 10 will always be ranked last or lowest. Um, additionally, if you are submitting um, CTIs and you happen to give two CI CTIs the same number, let's say you rank them both at five, um, all the CTIs at the same level of precedence will follow the usual hierarchy rules, um, and therefore low volume CTIs will get higher um, precedence over high volume ones. Um, and again, since this is not mandatory, if nothing is selected, we'll be using the default hierarchy rules. Um, I do want to note that there is no requirement to go in order here. So for example, if you have three different CTIs and you know that your first CTI is your lowest one, you can pick 10. That's totally fine. Your next one is the middle. You can pick five and your first one you could, or the last one you could pick one. It's all in um, reference to the order that they were ranked, but of course does not have to be done in a one, two, three order. Um, I'm going to click save here. And again, using my navigation um, field at the top, I will click next to keep going on. So this brings us to the uh, DRG um, uh, criteria. So for any data elements or parameters where you may have a long list of codes, there is an interface for uploading um, an Excel document for this information. So you'll notice on each of these pages, there is a submission template, um, which will be required to download. Um, and if you choose to do the, the Excel function, and once you download it, it will send give you to this template. I'm gonna click here. Hopefully you guys can still see my screen um, when I'm doing this, sometimes it switches. You can see an example here. These are fairly straightforward, simple Excel sheets. Um, again, you will be able to enter sort of any information that you see, add lines, delete lines, um, and uh, be able to follow this, uh, this template to be able to upload. So I actually did um, create a list. So I will do upload new, new DRG list and hopefully choose a file um, from my list. Apologies if it's not there. Okay. Okay, so I want to do the DRG template demo. Open. So when you upload the file, it will let you know um, if it uploads successfully, successfully or if there are any errors. 
Um, I would say the most common error we see tends to be like a formatting one. If there is a space in um, a number field or a character, like a period or something like that, that's likely where you may see an error. Again, hopefully it's fairly straightforward for you all to troubleshoot, but we of course can assist you if you are still experiencing some errors. Um, so once I upload um, the Excel sheet, it will show up here. When you are coming back to this, you can use um, this manually edit field. And what you could do is say, oh, I actually just only want two. And you can use the trash can function, or you can say, oh, I actually just want to add one more DRG. Again, you, this all can be done manually. If you're only making some small edits, we obviously suggest doing that. Um, however, if you would like to come and add another batch of codes, um, you can use the append function. And basically what that will do is you use that same template, Excel template, and it will add those DRGs to the bottom of this list. Um, okay, so I'm going to next. So same with IECD 10, <coughs> apologies. Um, again, you have this download submission template. It is gonna be a different submission template for each one. Um, again, hopefully you can see my screen so you can see here. Um, so we do recommend, of course, you guys just making sure that you're using the correct template for each one. Again, I think I already um, created a template for one. Yep, for this time. So I will, nope, it's empty. Let's see. Hopefully I did the right one. No, okay. Give me one second. <laughs> uh, I must not have actually, actually filled that out. Um, I actually, for the sake of time, I'm not going to upload this, but you can see it's the same functionality as I did with DRGs. Again, apologies, I thought I had pre-populated that before this. Um, but again, you can add, add this as needed. I'm going to do the next function. Um, okay, um, so let's look at the uh, chronic conditions. So the, the, the chronic conditions and actually these next couple ones are slightly more complicated, so they're not your straightforward just enter in one field. Um, so again, we recommend you utilizing this description at the top. For chronic conditions here, you have, um, I believe, 26 available chronic conditions from the CCW flag um, available for you to select. And all you have to do is check off the chronic conditions that you either want to include or exclude. Um, so in this case, I, a lot of people, let's say, do I want to exclude cancers, you select all of them, and then you use your drop down and say exclude. Alternatively, some people are focusing on a specific population. Um, so I'm going to look at, I'm just going to click diabetes, uh, hypertension, and COPD, and I want to include these. And you also have the option to determine the um, threshold of the criteria. And this basically determines um, if for your beneficiaries, how many of these chronic conditions must they have. If this is left blank, the default value here is one. However, if I select three, what I am saying is I want my beneficiaries to have all three of these chronic conditions that I have selected. Alternatively, two, they must have two of these three. And again, either left blank or by default, they must have one of these chronic conditions that I've selected. I'm gonna save here and I'm gonna click next. Prior utilization. So prior utilization, excuse me, um, is essentially saying um, prior to the trigger event, do you want to check for any other services? Um, so for example, if I want a beneficiary to have at least one admission, um, so I'm gonna do setting, inpatient admit, um, again, one admission in the, let's say last year, I can select my window, 365 days, um, and what this is saying is, okay, for our beneficiaries to be eligible, they must have one inpatient admission in the 365 days prior to the triggering event. Um, again, all of this is customizable for you as well. Um, and you can also change, um, you can look at um, other types of hospitalizations as well um, outside of admissions or ED usage. So I'm gonna save this here and do next. Look forward criteria. This is looking at the settings of care that you want to include immediately following the initial discharge. Um, by default, as you can see here, all of the settings of care are included. 
Um, however, if you want to focus, let's say on a higher acuity population, um, you could, for example, exclude home health agency and community, and it would just focus on those that were discharged to an inpatient post-acute or a nursing facility. And I'm gonna save this here and click next. Um, I actually think I don't have episode link, but we can go back and look at that. Um, so this is the model estimator. So once you've confirmed all of this information here in the workflow, you can select this generate episode estimator. Um, depending on the volume of requests, the volume of requests, um, this may take just a couple minutes. It could possibly take a few hours. Um, again, just depending on volume. Um, but what this will do, it will provide you the number of beneficiaries that met the criteria in the baseline using the um, filters that you have selected and the total cost of care of those baseline episodes. From that estimator, you can use um, this table to the right um, and determine what the minimum savings rate um, will be for this CTI. Uh, again, all that will be view for view viewable for you. I'm going to save and continue later, and I'm going to show you what that function does. Um, it essentially just brings you back to this main participation management. Um, however, now I can utilize this edit active CTI submission field. Um, so I left. This is all I wanted to do for today. Okay, let me come back and review. Um, I'm going to go in and select um, test CTI PY3 demo. That's the one that we we're just looking at and click edit active CTI submission, and it'll bring us back to this main field. Um, I can see here that um, this episode length, I actually put yes default. So I'm actually gonna change that and do no custom. Um, and I'm going to save and do next. Um, so I now have this episode length option on the left here because I have now said, nope, I wanna customize it. Um, and here again for care transformations, or actually I think for all the all the non-panel CTIs, um, the default episode length is 90 days, but you can go here and actually select um, as low as 30 days or up to 180 days for your episode as you would like. I'm going to change this, let's say, to a 60-day episode and save it. Um, and this last page, so again, if I click next to get went back to that model estimate. Um, if I make changes to here, you of course can go in and create this generate episode episode generate episode estimate again to ensure that you're looking at the most relevant um, baseline data for the inputs that you have entered. And then finally, this last page is this review and finalize um, page. And when basically when you feel comfortable with all of your um, criteria that you've entered and you press submit, what this does is it will notify the HSCRC um, that you're confident with your submission and we can review begin the review process on the back end. Um, please note, you are not required to submit prior to the May 31st deadline. Um, however, it does give us a little bit more time um, so that if there are uh, questions, we of course have some opportunity to reach back out to you. Um, and you also can, um, a new feature for this year, use this um, PDF export function and really basically it'll give a printout of all of the criteria that you have selected um, in a nice sort of readable, more user-friendly type of fashion. Um, I also wanna note that if you did click submit and I'll go ahead and click it right now um, and you do want to make changes afterwards, I'll go to view my CTI submissions um, and I have this test CTI demo you can go in and continue to make changes afterwards. We just ask that you re-click that submit button. So again, the HSCRC is aware that we are looking at the correct, um, the correct version and we are notified that you've made changes since the last time. Um, you also can have the opportunity to say, oh, I actually have changed my mind and I'm gonna withdraw this CTI for this year. If you click the withdrawal submission, it'll just prompt you confirming your withdrawal. Again, you'll say yes. Um, and it's letting us know that when we look at the final CTI submissions, this CTI will not be included. Again, nothing here is final until the 31st. So you can change your mind again and say, no, I actually am happy with this CTI. I do want to do it. Please go in here and click this reactivate submission. Um, and again, it'll just let us know, yep, this is an active CTI that we'll include for PY3. Um, so go back to participation management. 
Um, so that walked through the um, CTI submission as well as the edit CTI and view CTI one. Um, I now will bump in or walk into this create CTI from existing definition. So the purpose of this functionality, and it really came from a lot of feedback from you all last year, is essentially to allow a user to use an old CTI as a template for creating a new CTI. So um, please remember that any modification to a CTI, again, even if it's an NPI or a zip code or just one DRG, DRG change, it does require a new CTI to be formed. Um, however, um, rather than having to go through this create new CTI submission, all of those different steps, um, you can create a replica version of your old CTI and just make those small tweaks. Um, so in this case, I am going to use um, it's another test care transformation. I'll use this one. I actually don't know what this one says, so we'll see if this together. <laughs> um, but you can select any of your um, ones. Um, in this list, you'll see your CTIs from both PY2 as well as um, ones that you've made for PY3. And you can create a CTI from that. Um, and it will bring you to this screen. Um, the big thing that we do want to note is that we highly recommend you change this CTI name, even if it's just adding PY3 to the end of it um, so that it has a unique, unique name. Um, but it will also be given a unique identifier as well. Um, here, it looks like there really wasn't um, um, a lot here that we can see, but here, all of the um, information that you had in your this old CTI would be copied over. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and admit, and you can see here, um, I'm just gonna click on a couple ones. Let's say this DRG, there's a couple of DRGs that were listed already, um, zip codes, which is great. You can view what was already replicated over and then make tweaks as you want. So in this case, if I said, oh, I actually want to delete this one zip code, yes. And I'm just gonna add one additional zip code. That was my main change for this. Um, that is really the, the simple process that you would need to do to create this new CTI rather than having to go through the whole workflow um, from start to finish. Um, so I'm gonna save and continue later. So this is um, all of the sort of submission participation management. Um, I see a couple questions in the chat, but feel free to take, um, to take yourself off mute. Um, the first question is index event. Um, in this example, it is the hospital stay. Yes, yeah, so for most of the index event, it is the initial hospitalization or the, the ED event um, in those cases. And you can choose to either include all of the costs associated with that stay or exclude it and have your CTI only start after that index, um, index day um, is over. The next one is how is create CTI from existing different than editing an active CTI? Um, essentially, creating a um, CTI from existing is editing. You can actually not go in and edit an individual CTI. Any modification that is made to a CTI requires a new CTI to be created. So only those that are using the exact same definition for PY um, rolling over from PY2 to PY3, you would not need to do anything for. But if you are making a change for one existing CTI, you would use this create CTI from existing definition, make those tweaks, and notify us that the old CTI will be disenrolling um, and it has therefore been replaced by this new CTI. Hopefully that made sense. Okay. So I think that's all the questions we have for the um, uh, participation management submission. Um, how, oh, sorry, one more. Um, how then would we end the existing CTI if the edit says to, okay, so to end the existing CTI, you would need to notify the HSCRC at the hscrc.care-transformation um, um, at maryland.gov or whatever that one is, I can put it in there. Um, so you would need to notify us. So in the example that I just had, let me view my um, care transformation or care, my CTI submissions. Um, in this one, I created this new, um, PY31, um, so it's 10205, but let's say my um, uh, CTI from last year was 01-111, I would notify the HSCRC that I'm disenrolling 01-111 because I have replaced it with a new CTI. Um, 
So unfortunately you need to let us know via email there. There's no way to like let us know in the system. But we also, um, in part of after the submission process, we will do checks to ensure um, that you don't have like two basically um, identical CTIs and therefore you have a major overlap issue. Um, we would reach out and, you know, again, help um, hopefully clean that up for people. Jessica, this is Laura Russell from MHA. So I have a question. So it seems like if you were to edit an active CTI submission, so that's if you started a submission already and haven't saved it yet. Or yes. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. So yeah. So basically, once a CTI is created in this fiscal year for PY three it will then become available for you to view in this edit active CTI submissions. Um, and it's not, it's not edit old CTIs, it's edit active. So again, I know the naming here is a little bit hard because they all look very similar, um, but yes, the drop down would be here. Um, and the, a way to see a more concise list is to view this My CTI submissions. And this is sort of all the ones that you're all, that are available to you. So, and yeah, so yes, that is the main distinction between sort of those two, two different functions. Um, whereas this create CTI does allow you to pull over ones from um, from previous years. Okay, thank you. That's really helpful. Okay, great. Um, I'm going to start look moving on to the reporting enhancements associated with um, the CTP, and um, I'm going to jump around a little bit here <laughs> because they're a little all over the place. Um, so to start, I'm going to talk about the, um, the panel-based CTI reports. Um, and again, this, we really appreciate um, all of the feedback you guys have given because this really was based off of feedback from users that um, essentially the CTI report um, that's here um, was not particularly useful for panel-based CTIs. Um, they found it more helpful for our episodic CTIs. Um, and therefore, what we did is sort of create and tweaked um, some of the reports um, that hopefully reflect some information um, and added sort of per member per month comparisons for our panel based ones. Um, so here, I'm actually going to go to a different time period just so we can get a better sense um, of things. So give the program a second. Uh, but you can see here, this is hopefully what you guys are familiar with when you um, look at the CTI report. Um, the episodic ones kind of show some spending over time, month, month type of comparisons, um, and then some demographic data at the bottom. Um, however, if we are looking at a panel-based one, I'm just going to pick a primary care panel-based one. Um, first one I see. Give it a second. Um, so you can kind of see a, um, a new sets of reports. And what we tried to do was mimic some of the reports that are available um, in the MDPCP reporting suite that you, some of you guys have um, um, are familiar with. Um, I of course want to note that the reporting suites are um, are different. Um, primarily, the care transmission profiler is a non-PHI based report, um, so we of course had to take that into consideration. Whereas the MDPCP report does allow some some bedding drill down. Um, this of course will not, since we want to maintain it. Um, not having that PHI level detail. Um, so again, if I select a panel with CTI, you kind of see this new layout. Um, the summary tab on um, the left sort of remains the same. You can see sort of your count by month, per member per month, admission counts, um, things like that. Um, the graph here shows per member payments, um, or sorry, the graph here says per member payments um, broken out by your type. Um, your spend type. So of course, um, and also comparing baseline and performance, we've continued with the blue and the orange to help differentiate between that. Um, this new graph over here is looking again um, at um, monthly payments um, over time. So you can kind of compare that um, to your baseline period and see if there's any fluctuation. Uh, previously, there had been a lot of um, information that was done comparing a full 12 months and only like a couple months in the current performance year. So this hopefully gives you guys more of an apples to apples comparison. Um, we also did a breakout count of um, payments and for beneficiaries with chronic conditions. Again, this is similar to the CCW flags. You can kind of see here based off of those, um, the count and payments. Again, if there's is an area that hopefully um, we've had a few questions on wanting to see um, some 
potential causes with variations um, within the population or um, specific uh, disease states that you guys are focusing interventions on. This will, again, hopefully help show some of that. And then down here, we have kept um, the demographic data the same as beforehand. So you can see a breakdown by age and um, also a breakdown by uh, zip code um, down here. Oh, sorry, this is county. My apologies, county, not zip, um, down here um, for this area. So hopefully, again, this is something that you guys find more beneficial. You will, you of course, have the option to use the MAID to drill into PHI level detail for this. The intention is to get some trends information and to really help maybe direct um, some of the additional um, analysis questions that you guys are asking. Um, when you're in this, of course, this is new and it is live now. So when you're in it, please take some time to look at it. We welcome feedback for it, questions, things like that. Um, but again, hopefully you guys will find some benefits for that. Okay, um, I'm gonna move on to the state summary tab then. Um, and again, I'm gonna change the time period to last or PY1. Um, okay, so we revised just this bottom part of the, um, of the state summary report, the statewide savings estimates. So what you see up top here is the same um, as you hopefully are familiar with. Excuse me. Um, so um, previously in this preliminary difference column, we had shown the cumulative sum of all savings and dis savings across CTIs, um, which while that number may be helpful, it does not accurately represent the policy um, for how savings are calculated. So now what you see is the preliminary difference column only shows the positive savings from the CTIs um, where savings were generated. So if one of your CTIs um, missed, I'm just gonna pick on Meredith because they're up here. Let's say if one of, your, one of their CTIs missed by 15 million, we will not see that negative 15 million included here. We only see the positive CTI savings. Um, and what this does is now the bottom um, totals here, uh, all the way at the bottom, um, is a much better representation of what you can expect in the final statewide reconciliation. Um, so hopefully as this updates month over month, it will give you sort of a more accurate snapshot of where you are. We do wanna note that this, um, this table does not incorporate minimum savings rate. So it's not gonna be an exact replication of what the final numbers will be. But again, it hopefully better reflects um, what the policy um, what the policy decisions for for savings um, are were made, um, so that's hopefully what they'd be able to see. Um, any questions here? Okay. Um, target price. So target price detail. This is a new tab that was added. Um, and actually, I'll, I'll go back one once more before I go to target price. Um, so. Some of the reasoning behind this target price detail is you can see in the state summary, we have this preliminary aggregate target price. And there have been questions about, you know, it's preliminary, how do I know if it's gonna be an accurate representation of where the year ends, um, since it does incorporate some, um, some risk adjustment and things like that into it. So what we created was this new target price detail. Um, and essentially it um, is gonna be updated monthly and it allows participants to track the change in their risk um, on a month over month basis. So in each of these, this each of these you have a baseline and performance column, just like we've kind of seen in other reports. Your baseline target price won't change, but again, this performance number will change um, when the CTP is updated each month. Um, at the top here, you essentially will um, see the formula for the target price calculations. Um, and each of these columns kind of show where the um, CTI is at for each of those different um, variables. And um, hopefully with simple math, uh, you guys can plug those all in and that's where we get this, this target price associated here. Um, so it allows you guys to kind of see the breakdown of the math associated behind it. Um, we do want to note that um, for episodes that are below the 11 volume threshold, and this is likely maybe for like one or two months for a new performance year, 
you're not going to be able to see a target price here or it would just reflect the baseline um, since we do not want to put a target price here until we get sufficient volume that we are able to accurately risk adjust. Um, again, probably won't be um, won't matter much, but I could see in the first um, couple months of PY3, uh, again, you, these numbers probably mirroring for smaller CTIs, mirroring the baseline. Um, Laura, you asked a great question. <laughs> um, you asked is what is the definition of intercept? Um, I actually um, do not know, Nate, I don't know if you're on the call, if you can speak to that. If not, I can get you an answer from HSCRC. Yeah, so the intercept is essentially the fixed effect for the CTI. Um, and in this case, again, the, the HSCRC is the best source for the details on what goes into it because the fixed effects do vary a little bit depending on the thematic area of the CTI. But the easiest way to think about it is that's the component of the target price that's determined by your uh, historical experience um, based on the CTI definition that you've submitted for beneficiaries of that type that you encountered during the baseline period. Thanks, Nate. Okay, um, and with all of these um, new new uh, uh, reports, we just want to mention that you, of course, have your same filters at the top. So sometimes it just obviously makes it a little bit easier to see. So I'm just going to select. Um, Oh, I don't know why it's not showing. Oh, because we're in, I'm in the wrong area, but let me select a different one as an example. Here we go. Um, selecting Frederick, it just helps it cleaner for you all to see um, if you want to drill down into your area, but you, of course, have access to view everyone's um, target price and where they're at currently. Okay, um, so that is the update with target price. And the final ta new tab that we have is this final reconciliation tab. Um, so this tab um, will show sort of the waterfall savings associated with this. Um, it is intended to be the place where the final numbers appear. Um, so for incomplete periods, as you can see here, where this is looking at PY2, it will not display any information in this tab. It also will not display um, information for periods where there is no true reconciliation. So for example, that estimate um, period that we had in the first part of 2021, um, there, this is an evaluation period only, so there was an informal reconciliation. So you'll see that here. Um, so the time being, I will focus on PY1. Um, and um, so the intended workflow, or maybe what we would expect, is for you to go in and select your facility in the filter down. Um, again, it'll display it cleaner, and hopefully we'll um, will show sort of that waterfall savings effect that the policy um, has determined. So I am going to pick, um, sorry, I listed who some good examples in this area. So I'm gonna pick Frederick to start. Um, and this is sort of a clean version. Um, they had three CTIs and um, basically what it's gonna do, it's gonna pull in your episodes for your CTI. It's gonna pull in, the total saving, or sorry, the total payments um, associated with the CTIs um, and um, the resulting MSR. So for this one, 10,000 plus um, uh, episodes, you have an MSR of 1.5, um, the total payments associated with those 10,000 episodes um, and the final um, aggregate target price. This um, savings threshold column right here is just your MSR times your aggregate um, target price. And that's how you get your savings threshold. Again, with math, you can look at the savings or just savings, um, comparing your um, the difference of the final target price and the total payments. Um, for this one, they have a net positive of 8.2 million. Um, and um, the surplus savings, over here um, is looking at the savings that you have in this column um, minus the savings threshold. Um, so in this case, um, that 8.2 leaves them with an additional um, 6.2 of surplus savings beyond um, the savings threshold that was needed for that. Um, if we look at the next CTI down, um, this is a CTI that also had savings of um, 
931,000. Um, however, their savings threshold was 1.2. And um, what this does is it allows us to use the surplus savings from the CTI previously um, to basically cover uh, missing that initial savings threshold and thus their cumulative savings is added together. So we add that 8.2 to this 931 and you have 9.2 um, in cumulative savings here. And then finally, this last uh, this last CTI um, is did not um, produce any any um, savings, actually just savings. So we would sort of stop here, and the total savings for um, Frederick is nine point two zero four. So if I scroll down here um, and find Frederick, here we go. Um, this matches up to this number. The total just savings, or sorry, savings associated with this um, is nine point two zero four. The statewide savings offset, um, which we show that breakdown in that state summary report at the bottom, is 3.08, and therefore you'd, we'd be expected to see a 6.1 uh, million adjustment to the NPA for Frederick. Jessica, um, this is Laura again. Um, so in this example, it's kind of ranked nicely to show that waterfall effect for Frederick. Um, I'm wondering, in the reconciliation tab, I was pulling this the other day, it didn't seem like it was necessarily uh, ranked in that order and the downloadable report. Is this something that needs to be reconciled or is not in fact ranked um, within that report to show that waterfall effect? Um, I wonder if the download, when you download it to Excel, if we if it lost some of that um, that ranking. I do know in the system, like when we select one of these, I'm going to select GBMC as well. It will automatically do that ranking. So okay. that we can look into um, Nate. You and I can talk about it, and make a note if if some for some reason that changed on the export. Okay, that that's helpful. Um, yeah, I mean, and I can go back to the report, but it seemed when I was looking at the Excel the other day, I was trying to you know, remember yeah. the waterfall policy, and it um, it didn't seem like that translated to the report. So it's nice that we can go here and we know that it provides that. Um, thank you. Yeah, not a problem. Um, and I think what I want to do is just maybe look, walk through two more um, since it a lot of these different scenarios of like, okay, when do you stop when that waterfall effect, um, hopefully will kind of um, help answer that. Um, so um, I will um, I will walk through GBMC's one. So again, we're looking at, they have, oh, they have what, six? One, two, three, four, five, yes. So they have six. Um, looking at their first one, they have a surplus saving, or sorry, they have a total savings of 1.4, which gives them 1.2, um, surplus of savings over their minimum. Their next, um, their next CTI was also a positive savings, and they um, uh, exceeded their the minimum savings threshold. So again, we will add the two, get to cumulative savings, and your surplus cumulative save um, your cumulative surplus um, also does increase as well. So we continue down the line. We look at this next one. Um, they also met, had savings and met their savings threshold. So for fairly simple math, add that to the cumulative savings, add the additional to the cumulative surplus, those continue down. And we look at their fourth one, I think I'm at now. Um, and um, this is where they do have savings. However, they did not meet um, the threshold that was required. But again, because they have banked in that cumulative surplus, they are able to um, continue adding on this um, savings to their cumulative, but you'll notice that their, their surplus does go down a little bit in order to cover, um, to cover the miss there. Um, and then looking at this next one, um, sort of same situation, they have savings, um, did not meet the uh, minimum here, but again, had enough surplus to cover that. So we can add um, the 14, almost 15,000 um, in savings here, and they ended up just shy of three. And then we get to this last one, which shows a negative um, or dis savings for this CTI. So we don't count this and we would stop here. Um, again, I will scroll down to GBMC, which I thought I just saw. We'll put up here. So GBMC, again, we stopped at their fifth CTI. So they are, again, just shy of 3 million, which you can see reflected here. The statewide offset, again, you, the breakdown is in that state summary report. 
um, and they would expect a, um, a small MPA adjustment of negative uh, 349,000. Um, so that's sort of how the waterfall effect takes place. Um, and then lastly, I will look at see, Agnes, I think was one another good example. Okay, so St. Agnes had three CTIs, yep. Um, and theirs ranked, um, when you rank them based up at their savings, um, their first CTI, they had a savings of 159,000, which did um, meet the savings threshold here. Um, so we can continue on to the next one. Um, here they had a savings, um, did not miss the savings threshold, but you'll also notice that their cumulative surplus does not cover that. So this is why we actually stop at their first CTI here, since um, we would not be able to um, to uh, cover the total um, total savings that would be required. And if I scroll up here, you can see again, we stopped at the first one, um, 159,000, and they have a larger um, negative 3.1 um, offset to their MPA. So those are a couple examples of how that waterfall would work. Um, again, essentially the idea here is that um, the policy was created for a CTI that had, you know, that saved big, that did really well. It can boost um, a CTI that maybe barely missed or even in, in certain cases missed by a lot the minimum savings required as long as they have um, the surplus to cover it. Um, so yeah, I think that are some, those are the examples here. Um, please note that while you can see this um, in the CTP live right now, there is one more month um, of data. So the April data is needed before sort of the final final numbers are in um, and that would be reflected and communicated through the HSCRC. So I think that's the end of um, the prepared materials that I had. Again, if anyone wants to come off of mute, um, I'm happy to take questions. Um, we do have another session. Obviously, this is gonna be a, a replica of this session, but feel free to tell your colleagues. Um, we'll have another session on Thursday, April 27th at 3 p.m. And we'll be reviewing the same thing, um, but also um, one of the sessions will be posted on um, the CRISP website as well. And you guys can um, review that as needed for the future. I have uh, one final question for you. Uh, yep. Looking at the MPA adjustments, um, understand that we haven't received final results, um, but it did have that calculation for each hospital. But I wasn't seeing like where I could pull like detail behind that calculation. It just had numbers. Is there somewhere in the CTP tool where it has that information on how that adjustment was calculated? You're talking about this last column here, Laura? Yeah what revenue they used and uh, what percentage of Medicare payments? So um, yes and no. Um, so we have some of that breakdown um, okay. in this state summary report where you can see the actual dollar MPA and the percent of market. So that total um, um, percentage that was, um, that was assigned to the hospital. Um, obviously the actual number is dependent on the state performance. So that's why the, the numbers are not like completely set there, but this is going to give you a better depiction and walk through that, um, MPA number. And really we just roll that, um, this number over into this final reconciliation, um, over here, but that's the extent of the detail. Okay. So really you've got percentage, um, in this, in this state summary report. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and just a note, um, in both the state summary and the final reconciliation, um, the next one. so for hospitals that um, participated jointly, um, so Holy Cross here, this is a good example, um, it, the way we display the MPA is a little bit funny because obviously MPA is at an individual hospital level. So what this will show is the performance for this group CTI of these two different hospitals of you know, 2.5 in savings. Um, none of that is assigned at the individual um, hospital level. So you know, these numbers appear negative for each of these hospitals. Um, you have to let the HSCRC know, um, I don't forget the exact timeline, but that you guys have to let the HSCRC know how you would like um, that MPA um, adjustment distributed across um, 
hospitals for those that participated jointly. So in tab, then what you're saying is the MPA adjustment for <laughs> joint CTIs has not been allocated yet to the hospital. It seemed like it, it reconciled, like you just kind of did the adjustment based on the statewide savings generated, but you have, oh, but it seems like you're waiting until the end to see if those adjustments might be different because the hospitals might want to allocate them differently. That's correct. Okay. So there's a default there, and I, I apologize, I don't know what default they have in there, but there is a default that is can be changed and adjusted if um, a hospitals choose to allocate differently. So yeah, the numbers still add up because um, essentially it's all getting distributed, but it's just a matter of if they would like to tweak it, that of course can be done. Well, thank you all. We appreciate your participation. And again, most of these reports kind of um, came from your guys' feedback. So please continue to let us know. Um, and we're happy to, to, you know, let's say improve and, and add as needed. So thank you all and appreciate your time this morning.